words he speaks are true. We're all human every stew. We don't pledge allegiance to the Black Widow. His sting, the unholiest of kings, the Black Widow. Hello, and welcome to the next episode of the Spider's Parlor. I am the Spider, and once again, Stephen has decided to return. He's decided that, you know, he wants to be in attendance for this particular review because this whole album revolves around him. The whole album. And it's called... Alice Cooper's The Last Temptation. Out in 1994, Alice Cooper's The Last Temptation was a brilliant, and we're talking brilliant, concept album about Stephen, a young boy, uh, who is tempted by an individual by the name of The Showman at a sideshow carnival. Turns out The Showman is the devil. And he is trying to uh, tempt Stephen into joining his sideshow of the damned. The sideshow, ironically, the very first song on the uh, album, uh, is made up of all these damned individuals and characters like uh, Mercy and uh, other creepy uh, characters. But The Last Temptation... Uh, actually came out uh, with Marvel Comics creating a three-issue miniseries devoted to the storyline with Neil Gaiman uh, writing it. And it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, very creepy. Very, very creepy. Um, well written. Good artwork. Um, but the songs on here, you know, there's ten songs that make up the album. We start off with Sideshow, and it's a, you know, it's very cool. It's got some great, uh, you know, background noises of uh, roller coasters and you know, the typical sideshow circus, you know, noises and stuff. Nothing's free. Very creepy. You know, my favorite line on that is, um, "Seal the deal, close the cell, take my hammer, drive the nail, sign upon the dotted line. I'll be yours and you'll be mine. Nothing's free. Eventually." Um, then he talks about, you know, 30 pieces of silver and a deal's a deal. This is very creepy. Lost in America became the big single from this one, and it became a staple for years uh, in the Alice Cooper show. Uh, Lost in America is, you know, Alice, and more or less it's his tribute to Beavis and Butthead. You know, it just, and it's very simple music. It's just, you know, it just goes in circles, more or less. It, 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 it's catchy. There was a video for it in, uh, back in 94. Um, You're My Temptation. Uh, that's a very, very creepy song. Bad Place Alone, another one. Uh, the best song on here for me is uh, Stolen Prayer. Um, I just, you know, Chris Cornell and Alice did this together, and it's very, very good. It's just, you know, it's great harmonics, it's, you know, lyrically, it's great. I would have loved to have seen this done uh, live with Cooper. Uh, me personally, I don't think it's actually been done live. I'm pretty sure. Um, Unholy War and Lullaby, very, very. Uh, it just you know some of these songs just you know may not be scary in the sense of like the you know the lyrics or something. It's just there's something about it that gives you this vibe of just like a chill. It's Me was another single from this one, uh, and there was a video for it, and it's probably one of his best concept videos. It's very good, and um, if you can hunt it down, it is rare, but I think YouTube may still have it, I'm pretty sure. And finally, to close it all, Cleansed by Fire, uh, you know, it's, it's, it pretty much says it all. It wraps up the whole album. And what was so cool about The Last Temptation is that Alice brought in these great old words that haven't been used in a lot of stuff. Sin, temptation, uh, and stuff. And, you know, he used these old words and he brought new life to them. And, I thought, you know, it was very cool. Um, but this was the album a lot of people thought Alice had kind of gone to almost like Christian rock. 
And in a way, I guess it could have easily fit on a, maybe on a Christian rock stage, but I'm sure most of them would never let them be on there because of who Alice Cooper represents. But the album had, it was, a, it was at a time when grunge was ruling the world. This was a breath of fresh air. Uh, and there was still, you know, some good solid rock at that time, and this is definitely one. So if you can find The Last Temptation, I cannot recommend it strongly enough. Once again, it, it would make my top ten, but it would not make my top five. Two more albums that we have had yet to review come into play on my top five, and we will get to them very soon. Uh, so if you can find The Last Temptation, you shouldn't have too much trouble. Get a hold of it. If you can get a hold of Marvel's uh, comic book, The Last Temptation by Gaiman, get it. Uh, Dark Horse Comics reprinted in black and white. Uh, you know, I can't remember, maybe a couple years ago. Um, to maybe a little longer. I can't quite remember the year. Uh, get that. It's the same thing. It's just all bound and in black and white. Uh, Marvel, for the record, did release a color version of the three-issue miniseries, but it's very hard uh, to find. Um, but yeah, so, you know, Alice's music, from the minute he made his comeback in 86 from Constrictor to, the, to Along Came a Spider, has been one brilliant album after another. There was no let-up. And it was just, he just kept proving it time and time again. Whether his albums were big blockbusters or only mediocre sales, it didn't matter. The critics loved them. The fans that did get them were, you know, and everybody liked them. And then, of course, it's just, you know, it's the way of the world. You know, mainstream radio will not necessarily play these great classic artists in their new material. And it's a shame. Hence why, you know, one of the reasons Alice has got his radio show, he can play his material. And, you know, let the world hear it. He deserves to be heard. But, uh, yeah, so uh, now we'll go into 1997's The Fistful of Alice, a great follow-up live album to his 1977 uh, Alice Cooper show.